I've been going to Thailand for over 28 years now, and in the last 16 years, I've spent about six months a year there. So I want to talk about nine myths that people hear about but aren't true. And the first one is that Thailand is dangerous. I've been out in Bangkok at night and in London at night, and I do think that London is more dangerous. In the West, you get kids who go out looking for trouble where they want to fight or something, and I don't see that in Thailand. In any country, of course, you've got to be aware if you go out at night, but I don't find Thailand that dangerous at night. If we actually look at the murder rates per 100,000 people, then you can see the Americas, it's 16. In Europe, it's 3. And in Asia, it's actually less at 2.9. If you look at the individual countries, then you've got the United States here, 4.88 per 100,000. That's how many murders. And in Thailand, it's less than that at 3.51. So it is less than the US. In the UK, it's only about 1 if we come down here, 0.92. So it is more than in the UK. But I still don't think it's something to worry about. Now, on the other hand, hiring a motorbike is dangerous. In Phuket, I see accidents all the time, probably on average one every week or every two weeks. So you have got to be careful. You get a lot of foreigners come over. They're used to driving on the other side of the road and they're not used to how people in Thailand drive. So foreigners do have a lot of problems on motorbikes. The other thing in Thailand to be careful of, especially in Phuket during the low season, is strong currents. If you've got high waves, then you get currents that pull people out and you've got to be careful of that. If you've got high waves, then only swim between the flags. And if you've got high waves and there are no flags on that beach at all, then I probably wouldn't swim there. So the second thing is that everyone's out to scam you. Now, back in the 1990s, when Thailand was a lot poorer, there were a lot of scams around. If you're in Bangkok, then people would approach you, try to get you to smuggle jewels to another country or to get you to go to a coffee shop. And I don't really know what happened there, but I did hear about that happening and I had people come up to me, approach me. I just don't see that nowadays, but you might get someone who's trying to overcharge you. So if you don't like that, then only buy things where you've got a fixed price. Don't go to the markets where you have to haggle. And if you do want to haggle, then maybe offer 50% of what they're asking and try and make an arrangement around there. Nowadays, there are a lot more places where items are priced and you've got lots of shopping centers so plenty of places to shop with fixed prices you can have a look at an article like this one here on travel scams and it says 21 most common scams in thailand have a read of it just see what they say keep it in the back of your mind but you shouldn't let it stop you going to thailand because it's just not that common nowadays so the third one is that the food is too spicy. Now, I agree, some of the food is spicy. But if you're a foreigner, then they'll tend to make it less spicy for you or they'll ask you if, it, if you want it spicy or not. And I actually normally have to ask for extra chili to put on it because I'm a foreigner, so they think I don't want it spicy. But I actually want it spicy and I have to put extra on it. If you go to some of the local restaurants, especially away from the tourist areas, then the spice comes separate. You kind of get four pots of different spices and you put your own on. So there you don't have to worry about it. If we look at some pictures here, you've got lots of seafood, some really nice dishes. I think this uh, it says green curry, looks like Tom Yum to me. And this one here, Pad Thai, but really delicious. So it's really great to eat. And I miss Thai food when I'm not in Thailand more than I miss English food if I'm not in England. So the fourth myth is that the country is overrun by tourists. Now, if you go to the center of Bangkok or a tourist area like Pattaya, Patong, or the center of Chiang Mai in the high season, then it's crowded with tourists and I don't like it. If you go to those places during the low season, then it's fine. But actually the area of Thailand is four times the area of England. So you've got lots of areas you can go to. 
if you think about England, London's busy, but the countryside in England is not at all. And there are many national parks in Thailand. And also there are many islands where tourists don't go. If we look at this picture, this is an island on the west coast below Phuket near Malaysia. And there are no houses and huts here, a few on this island, but so many beaches here. And I think I could just see one person there. So some really empty beaches and there are a lot of islands around there. You can actually see in the background, there's a lot more islands here and a lot of those are the same. So it's easy to get away from them either to islands or to national parks where there aren't so many people. The fifth myth is that you'll get food poisoning. And I've never had food poisoning in Thailand in 28 years. I can't even remember someone telling me that they'd had food poisoning in Thailand. Now, if I take India, I went there for three months and I got food poisoning twice. Outside of Goa, I had meat twice and I got food poisoning both of those two times. So it's not because my stomach is immune to it. It's just because Thailand is not that common for getting food poisoning. So the sixth myth is that it always rains during the rainy season. And it actually doesn't. Most days it doesn't rain, but a lot of the days it will be sunny during the morning the cloud will build up in the afternoon and then it will rain for about an hour in the evening. That's quite common. When it does rain, in the old days, it never used to rain more than about three days. Now, the weather seems to be changing all over the world. And I would say now that actually some of the dry season in Thailand rains. I noticed that in December it has always been dry in the past and nowadays it does rain some of the time. But wherever you are, it it's not overcome by rain it just rains some of the time there are different areas and the west coast during the rainy season so august is the middle of the rainy season and you get more rain on the west coast because there's a monsoon that comes over from india if we look at this here then this is an article about visiting thailand in august and Phuket, which is on the west, gets 272 millimetres of rain in August, whereas Koh Samui on the east coast only gets 106, so roughly a third of the rain. So you can just find the best place to go. And if you look at one of these, like visiting Thailand in August or visiting Thailand in September, then just check the different areas and see where it gets the least. So... Myth number seven is that Thailand is not for kids, but I see many kids in Thailand. There are even many families that I know that have kids living in Thailand and living in Phuket. They've even got British schools there. If we look at this article, then you've got 13 fun things kids can do in Phuket. So let's go down. You've got this trick eye museum and I know they've got one of these in Chiang Mai. I think they might have one in Pattaya as well. So you can kind of take photos. Looks like you're over the water here. An upside down house. You got surf house. This is really popular in Kata. Water slides. Uh, golf mini golf here. Kids club. This one, it's on a lake, so you can do wakeboarding. Lots of go-kart places. There are several in Phuket, uh, several in Pattaya. You've got a trapeze thing here in one of the hotels. These zip lines. You've got Zorbing, this is in Patong. An aquarium, that's on the east of Phuket and a bird park and there are so many beaches and other places that you can go as well so number eight thailand is sleazy and some areas are sleazy you've got places in bangkok pattaya and patong which is in phuket but most areas are actually quiet the areas that are sleazy they're actually also quite good fun as well in patong or 
in Pattaya, you've got walk-in streets and not only have you got go-go bars, you've also got street entertainers, people doing magic or break dancing. You've got good live music and you can play pool. So some of the area is sleazy, but there's also lots to do as well and lots of entertainment. If I do a search here of Pattaya, which is it's probably got the most bars, girly bars in any city in the world, I would I would guess. But if you just do a search for images of Pattaya, actually most of them are showing the beach or showing some shows. There's a show there. And this place here on the river with the kind of river market. Then again, the beach here. So actually most of the pictures are not showing the nightlife. Here's a club, but that's not a sleazy club or anything. That's just a normal disco. And then other things here like the restaurants and the temple. So even the sleazy areas also have some good areas. But if you do a search on Krabby, then you just don't have that kind of area. It's all about islands, nature, doing some adventure tours and going on a ferry to some different islands and things like that. It's all about beach life and nature. So number nine is that you won't be able to buy the things that you need. And I would say that most things that you want, as long as you remember your money, credit card and passport, then you'll be able to get everything that you need for a normal holiday. There are some specialized things that you probably wouldn't be able to get in a lot of the tourist areas, like if you wanted something for your camera, an accessory that's quite unusual, then you might have trouble getting it. But you've got shopping centers, you've got Tesco superstores, you've got Big C, which is a big superstore, and many shops. If there are specialist things that you want, then you really need to go to Bangkok or get them before you leave. If you're staying a long time, you can go online to a store called Lazada. And it's similar to Amazon. You can buy pretty much anything there. But you do have to wait probably two weeks, sometimes even three weeks to get that de delivered. So it does take a time. As an example, here is Central Festival in Phuket. And you can see it's pretty big. It's over here. And they're actually building a new one now opposite that's probably about twice as big. And there's everything here. There's cinemas and you can just buy everything you want. You can even have dental treatment and beauty treatment, things like that. They've just got everything here, about four floors. There's also a really good supermarket in the basement and you can buy everything there. Not only foreign food from the West, but things like Korean food, Japanese food. They've really got everything that you could want. Mm -hmm.